So finding a way to make this a politics show. Great. Good job, EJ. Yeah, Jackass. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk, let's talk Jets. The Jets, uh, two and five now. Speaking of politics, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you get Devontae Adams and nothing. Like this, this, this at some point we're, we're going to realize this is an Aaron Rodgers problem. This is not longer just uh, I need help. You got help, and your team is just not that offense. That off the let's just start here. The defense is not the issue number one. The defense has, has actually been relatively solid this year. Okay, mm-hmm. their offense is not special. There's no movement. There's nothing that the 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 Packers offense is. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just keep it keep it keep it bold and keep it rare. It's they've been shit. Aaron Rodgers been shit. What says you? What says you? I'm going to give you a choice for what direction I'm going to go with my rendition of this. Go ahead. You could either go with the movie Die Hard, which I know you know, or mm-hmm. there's a movie called Leviathan that includes an actor, Ernie Hudson, um, which you obviously also know, uh, more yes. famously, of course, Winston Zenmore from Ghostbusters. Which direction should I go? Let's go Die Hard. Okay, he's going to go with Die Hard. As you're, you use the term, um, when are we going? No, not the term. I'm sorry. The phrase. My dad almost came from the grave to correct me for that one. Holy shit. Um, to you use the phrase, when are we going to realize Aaron Rodgers is the problem? Um, my response to you would be in the fashion of Reginald Johnson and Sergeant Al Powell. Well, uh, uh, or rather Bruce Willis talking to him. Welcome to the party, pal. Where the fuck has rest of America been? I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen some time ago. And I, I didn't have the opportunity to be proven right last year because of the because football. Injury. Four, four plays and done. Okay. But I, I, I elaborated in great deal, detail on Earnestly Speaking, on Huddle Up, on the Student of the Game podcast, even a bit on the Duval Dive as well. You know why you needed all those bells? That's how many fucking times I tried to tell you people that this was a failure. Oh, and by the way, also said this on the Duval Dive, Robert Sala was never the issue. Okay? The mafia, the Cosa Nostra, had an informant. It's being torn apart from the inside. Okay? The AFC East is, is the block. And the Godfather Josh Allen is taking it all over. Okay, yeah, there you go. I think the the big sign for me with this been issues we should probably we should take it more seriously is the fact that Aaron Rodgers chose not to be at camp or at training camp or no. be with us. I, I think there's something. I, I no, Kyle, I think there's something to be said about you being a quarterback, you not playing for over a year, okay, and not being there. You know, connecting with your teammates. You know, in, in a way that Tom Brady did even during COVID, and I'm not saying he had to do everything that Tom Brady does. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not oh. going, to, going to say all that. What I'm saying, though, is that oh. Aaron Rodgers feels – I think Aaron – hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let me get this point quick and I'll, I'll get to you. I feel, like Aaron Rod, I feel like Aaron Rodgers feels like he's still at the point in his career where he can just, like, come into class and just, okay, you know, I'm that dude that, you know what, I don't need to, I don't need to practice. I come in and do a test and blah, 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 and I'll be all right, and I'll get, I'll get an A or B, whatever. No. No. You need to – you know, in, in a sport that – that entails working parts working together. You know, I think Aaron Rodgers set a bad precedent and a bad tone for that team before the season even started. And we and we should have been. I mean, at least on my, my, my part, and I'll, I'll I'll stand on my on my on my ten toes on this one. You know, that should have been the sign that yo, this dude, th- just the energy he brings is is not some positive. That, that okay. I mean, his play, and, and now his play can't turn around either. On top of that, okay. Um... Mr. Gambini, that was a very lucid, intelligent, well thought out objection. Overruled. Okay. Why? First of Why? all, the camp thing was not an Aaron Charles Rogers blunder. That was a New York Jets media team blunder. We have been over that on this show. And with the details we had, that Aaron Rodgers ahead of time let them know that he was going to be missing on those. Days. It wasn't, it wasn't even full training camp that that happened. It was freaking mini camp, I believe, mini if camp, I remember right. correctly. Okay. Yeah. Oh no. A B. You cite Tom fucking Brady. Hey, dipshit. He missed time in that same space as well. 
granted, it was probably for a different reason and a more important right. reason than Aaron Charles Rogers because he was dealing with his divorce and his family literally falling apart at that time. So I'm not mocking Tom for missing that right. time. Nobody has. And a matter of fact, Tom got a pass because he's Tom fucking Brady. Yeah, the difference the between Tom and, and, and Aaron Charles Rogers is, uh, uh, listen, we've seen it in other sports as well, in particular with um, Kyrie Irving in the NBA, with Barry Bonds with baseball. If you don't like the media and you let them know it, funny how that shit works that human beings naturally call out the shit you do wrong with a bit louder voice. And Aaron Rodgers is prickly. I, I, I don't think that's debatable, yeah. right? I, I mean... He's, he's no, an asshole. He's the dude's an asshole. This is cold what it is. He's an asshole. And no disrespect to to um to our good friend Russell Baxter, who normally like it feels like on a weekly to daily basis talks trash on Colin Cowherd for being critical of Aaron Charles Rogers. Person, I saw something he posted yesterday. Actually, I saw something he posted. It, well, it's not even just yeah. yesterday. Like that's been a trend. He's been on for a while. Well, I know for and, years. For years. Um, you, you, you well, on the show years ago, on the show, he was he was he would talk shit about about uh, a Colin Coward, but the okay, media and that. Like, okay, right, right. Thinking more about him putting Rogers as if he's the victim, and that's you could listen. You could be critical of Colin Coward if you want. He said up front that he views himself as a storyteller more than a sports analyst, and Bax is a analyst through and through. I have yeah. met this man. I know this about him. There's a reason why he was the researcher for the Schwab. Okay? Yeah. I get it. However, I haven't had him on this podcast in years. I know you haven't. Um, yeah. But the, it sounds like a you problem, frankly. I'm joking. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I don't think Rodgers is defensible typically. However, you're citing stuff that isn't the problem. Where Rodgers is the problem correctly is dictating where the Jets were the problem is saying yes everywhere. You stupid dummies actually gave Nathaniel Hackett the fucking game ball the first time you beat the Broncos. Not even realizing, <clears throat> although we did here on this show, by the way, not even realizing that the reason you beat them that time we be, it was because Nathaniel Hackett wrecked this damn team that bad in the form of the Broncos. Then what did we see happen, Ernest Christian? The Broncos have beaten the Jets 10-9 to with a rookie quarterback with an inferior roster. But please, let's give Nathaniel Hackett the game ball. But please, let's fire Robert Sala. And hidden in the headlines behind that is relieving Nathaniel Hackett of fucking play-calling duties. Okay. Now, granted, for Monday night, can we give the Pittsburgh Steelers a little bit of credit? That defense is rude as fuck. Okay. We need to be fair. Oh, we got them in a second. Oh, okay. It's a great segue. But real quick. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Real quick. Cause I, 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 gotta, I don't want to exit the, the Jets stuff just yet. Gotcha. Is, is, it, is it over now? Season's over? Two and five? Or does it, does it require another schedule look before we actually. Put the uh, rest in peace on, on this on, on the season for the Jets. I think here, here, here. If we're going to explore it, we're doing it for you. I told you motherfuckers they weren't making the playoffs back in August. What do you expect it's, me then, to say? Then it's over. Then it's over. It's over. No, I think it's over. Because even if, even because so your next four games at Patriots, Texans, at Cardinals, uh, Colts. <laughs> then another stretch of Seahawks, Dolphins, and Jaguars and Rams. So you got winnable games. But again, you're now, you, but you, when you're two and five, you can't be the team that's like, oh well, we can win that game. When you're the team that people look at, people look at you as that, as that easy game, easy win now because you're the team that sucks now. Yeah. Well, if you so, have the right team makeup, you can do that. Like for example, the Texans have Will Anderson and a pretty good right. defensive front. I expect them to wreck the Jets. If you don't, don't have, right? You know. And I don't know if they're gonna get any better. Like their issues are something that I don't think. I don't think this. Changes on a dime. I just think something that's. I think the, the Jets are through seven weeks are pretty much who they are going forward. Rodgers is not going to get much better. Yeah, he might. Rodgers might get play one or two good games in the next stretch, but 
Okay, but you, you they, they they need more than that at this point to get back in the race. And I don't see it happening at this point. The AFC, East, the AFC East is done. Buffalo has that shit wrapped up. They got that shit wrapped up. Um, the wild card is not defined yet, but look at even the Bengals will come back now. The Bengals are, are making their Fair ascent back to the uh to the uh, AFC wild card picture now with, with two wins in a row. So, like I said, you look at the AFC wild card picture, it's, it's still a little messy, but I, I, at this point now, seven weeks in, what I've seen with this team, I just don't see him cracking it. I just don't. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. out. I'm out. Beyond, we, we can reassess in four weeks, but now, yeah. Beyond a sorry. injury, you're absolutely right. We got to be. We got to at least acknowledge that that that's a factor. Um, you know, you're down to Tim Boyle, which do you understand now? Thirteen interceptions and one touchdown in a career in college. Okay, do you get it? I know your bitch ass never looked it up, so I sent you that video. Okay. You did. So, you did. I got it. And you never well, looked it up. You, you so, never. So, so, so he's. No. Did you look it up or not? No. I was busy. You're busy. But you know, I was busy. <laughs> I was busy. No. Also, Tim Boyle, white privilege. <laughs> oh. <shit. laughs> I said it, bitch. I, I said it. I don't necessarily agree, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but Colin Kaepernick can't get a job, but Tim Boyle could. No, I'm joking. I, I'm, I'm just being funny. I'm just being, I'm just being politics now. So I'm, I'm just being yeah, funny. Being By the I'm way, being funny. Randall Cobb not being white, that's Rogers privilege. That's not white privilege. There's a difference. That's true. <laughs> Mention the Steelers. 